U.S. Supreme Court decision compels the state of Maine to fund religious schools. On June 21st, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of the two Christian families that filed a lawsuit and subsequent appeal against the exclusion of religious institutions in Maine's tuition assistance program. Maine is a rural state that is sparsely populated in several counties. Half of its school districts do not have public high schools, so they established a school choice program long ago. The program subsidized the average tuition cost for students admitted to a private school in districts with no public schools. Parents could use this program to send their children to a secular school or a religious school of their choice until 1981, when B Maine banned quote unquote sectarian schools from the program. Since 1981, Maine has prohibited families from using taxpayer funds from this school choice program to study at a private religious school or study at private religious schools. In the new ruling of Carson v. Mocken, the Supreme Court said that the system that Maine had implemented was unconstitutional since, according to the court, the provision of the First Amendment guarantees the freedom of religion, something that the Maine system did not adhere to by paying tuition only for the students who did not go to religious schools. The liberal justice Sonia Sotomayor stated, quote, today the court leads us to a place where separation of church and state becomes a constitutional violation. I don't understand the argument for this. Why do they think this is okay? We have religion, we have gov taxpayer money funding school, religious schools. How is this not a violation of church and state separation? Do you understand what the so, argument is? Yes, I and I'm going to read um, a, a section from Religious News Service to explain the arguments because they will be, it's put in a way that was very easy for me to understand. So I'd like to repeat it for the audience. Um, um, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote for a conservative majority that the Maine program violates the Constitution's protections of re for religious freedoms. Quote, Maine's quote unquote non-sectarian requirement for its otherwise generally available tuition assistance payments violates the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Regardless of how the benefit and restriction are described, the program operates to identify and exclude otherwise eligible schools on the basis of religious exercise, Roberts wrote. The three liberal justices dissented, quote, this court continues to dismantle the wall of separation between church and state that the framers fought to build, Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote. Justice Stephen Breyer noted in a separate dissent that Maine, quote, wishes to provide children within the state with a secular public education. This wish embodies in significant part the constitutional need to avoid spending public money to support what is essentially the teaching and practice of religion. But Roberts wrote that states are not obligated to subsidize private education. Once they do, however, they can't cut out religious schools, he wrote, echoing his opinion in a similar case from two years ago that happened in Montana. Quote, Maine chose to allow some parents to direct state tuition payments to private schools, a, a decision that was not forced upon it, Roberts wrote, quoting Sotomayor's dissent. Um, did that help explain some of the arguments? It makes no sense because, okay, so there's supposed to be a, the argument is that since they're funding private schools, they should also, and they're not required to fund private schools. Since they're doing that, they should also be able to fund religious schools. This still doesn't, I mean, it's kind of saying like, hey, you are, so for example, if a government builds a building spends money, taxpayer money to build a, to build a building that is not a religious building. You're saying, well, since you spend money on make you know constructing a building that you didn't have to, you should also be able to use taxpayer money to build like temples now, like or mosques and churches. Like, I mean, this line. I mean, what's what is wouldn't that like destroy every, any barrier between church and state? If you're saying like since you're doing a non-religious version of it you should also be able to do a religious version of it. Wouldn't that argument just destroy any barrier between church and state? Because you, you could use that argument for anything and you could all of a sudden do fund everything religious related. So this ruling, the, the like the broader impact of this ruling is more specific. So the 
like other states that it will likely affect would be like the state of Vermont that has a similar no. program. So this is. I, I understand that it's specific, but the line of reasoning that is being used here can be used to make the government do anything religious that it wants. If the, if the standard is since you're doing a non-religious version of it, that you don't have to, therefore that opens the door to you being able to do a religious version of it. I'm just saying that this opens the door for floodgates to every, the government being involved in anything religion related. Do you know what I mean? I could use that anywhere, this line of reasoning. I understand that this is specific, but the line of reasoning, it just doesn't make any sense. To me, at least. Yeah, I don't, I don't like know enough of the legal minutia to be able to say, yes, that is like a line of reasoning that could be applied elsewhere or not. Um, but so I, there's some statements by, um, an organization which is fantastic to support called Americans United for the Church Separation of Church and State. Really great secular organization. Um, and so I want to read some of the, the statement that their CEO, um, Rachel Laver, I think that's how you say her name, put out. Um, so uh, they said, quote, the, the court is forcing taxpayers to fund religious education. Um, here, the court has violated its founding principle by requiring Maine to tax citizens to fund religious schools. Far from honoring religious freedom, this decision tramples on the religious freedom of everyone. Worse, the court has opened the doors to government-enforced tithing, an invitation religious extremists will not ignore. So that kind of ties into what you're saying. Um, the court's ultra-conservative bloc argued that refusing to tax citizens to fund religion is discrimination against religion. It's nothing less than gaslighting to cloak this assault on our constitution in the language of non-discrimination. If the conservative justices were concerned with discrimination, they would not have issued this opinion because it forces taxpayers to fund two religious schools that discriminate against LGBT families, one barring their admission, and the other forcing them to undergo counseling and renounce their sexual orientation or gender identity or be expelled. One's school's stated educational objective is to, quote, refute the teachings of the Islamic religion and the truth with the truth of God's word. And now Muslim taxpayers will be forced to fund that school. This court appears to be concerned with discrimination only when conservative Christians make the claim and often as here in cases in, in ways that further discrimination. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just leave it there with that segment it's i just it's just so bizarre like religious freedom means that the government can use taxpayer money to fund religious schools i mean religious okay, so freedom religious freedom is mostly the idea of government staying out of religious affairs not getting in their way like letting that means the government like if you want to practice your religion as long as you're not violating any laws go, if government doesn't get in your way then your religious freedom is being recognized it doesn't require the government to fund you for your religious freedom to be recognized that makes no sense so here's kind of the idea behind it so the state of maine has an obligation to educate all children this is just a fact of being in America. You are obligated by law to give a free education to children. So they have that obligation. However, they are so sparsely populated that they cannot set up school systems in some areas. So, so as to not violate their own obligations, they said, okay, you do not have access to any public education in your area. So what we'll do is we will basically give you almost, it's not exactly vouchers, but we'll give you money to subsidize your education to make up for the fact that we cannot provide it to you for free. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of, this is the background. So they, people who like this opinion are making the argument that the government has an obligation to give these families who do not have school districts available to them this money. And what they choose to do with that money should be their own free choice. They give an example, like if you get a social security check as part of your benefits or a stimulus check, 
and you decide to use that money because that's taxpayer money that stimulus check is taxpayer money and if you decide to go spend that money and donate it to a church that's not a violation of church state separation but you are technically using taxpayer funds to do so and it's part of your free choice the government has an obligation based on the program that they opted to set up to give you these funds and There's suddenly they're saying no we're not going to allow you to exert your free choice into how you spend this money we're saying you can you cannot do it on the basis of it being a religious school so they're saying that that is discrimination there's a difference okay so for example the money that the government gave you as like the you know COVID package or release whatever to call it that's for you to spend it on whatever you want that's just money that is being released for whatever okay this is money specifically being released for education to meet the government standards of education you know what i mean so there are certain children should be educated to a certain level okay there's needs they need to know math they need to know how to read and write this money is supposed to be used on that that's what this money is being used if this money is used on anything else but then getting kids to that level education level that's a violation of what the purpose of that money was if the money that the government has set for education okay is all of a sudden used on telling kids about jesus that's a violation of the government church and state separation okay if you have a general release of cash in the system right to to pump the economy okay that's the economy it could be it could be spent on anything but money set for education needs to be spent on education not on jesus stuff you know what we need what satanic schools <laughs> that's what other people were saying in live chat time for satanic temple university <laughs> yeah Dude, well, they we need that one up now i don't know we need satanic schools in that state so and they need to apply for government funding asap just to show the point of seculars you know if we co if we keep doing this at some point like satan you know the satanic temple might become like a leading religion in the united states because like we're opening the Especially floodgates of Ruby money Wayne. yeah with with laws and you know with legal favoritism and all these fundings to religions in the united states you know maybe if you look if you had the crystal ball and looked 100 years from now you would like the, the number one religion in the united states would be the satanic temple if we keep going this way but anyways this is dangerous because now we are we have a legal precedent for the taxpayer money to be spent on religious education okay and since that that is a the law now this could you know i don't know i'm not i don't know what's going to happen but this is this could be it really well, it's, it's under, this is it's the under future the future circumstances to be clear i know i know but when there are other decisions are being made they usually use decisions made in past cases as a reference you know what i mean so even if this is a specific situation it will it will set a precedent for future decisions okay so i'm just saying that if united states which is the world superpower and with all the money that he has access to all of a sudden starts brainwashing of children you know religious brainwashing of children this is the future of the country there's nothing there are few things that are as important as the, the type of education that children are getting like when it comes to where the direction of a country you know what direction a country is heading uh, one of the main ways you can control it is what are how what are children's are what are children being exposed to okay and so this is this should be very alarming in my opinion. Yeah, so um, Erkin has some comments saying either have enough public secular schools or you have to fund any and all schools. As they don't have a su sufficient number of public secular schools, they'll end up having to fund any and all schools. If they had a, um, a sufficient public secular school system that could accommodate all students, then they could have ceased funding religious schools. That's basically the principle of it. You understood very well. So here's the thing. Maine the state of Maine or any other state that has any program that subsidizes private education to some extent, 
they can avoid this issue of, um, you know, if, if they, this, this church state violation, they can avoid this entirely if they beef up their public school system to be able to provide that to all students. But so basically, so this standard is saying as long as you are funding or allowing the state is giving subsidies to private education in any way, shape or form, the state cannot say what kind of school it goes to. And so this, this could be fixed by the state of Maine, you know, um, improving school transportation so kids from farther away can go to public schools or by doing programs for a combination of remote learning or building or you know building the infrastructure of school districts so they don't have to do this they could fix this but it would just take time um so in a way that's kind of I, like positive i this have an instant you know this isn't like set in stone there are ways to avoid funding public religious education they just have to build up better systems and then so they no longer have to fund private schools and then they don't have to fund religious schools okay even but even if they did that the fact that we have this in writing like let's say for example they managed to fix all of this okay and they have so many schools that religious schools are not required and there's not a single religious school in maine that is uh, funded by taxpayer money you think like oh great crisis averted no crisis not averted because we have it in writing right now that this is okay so the fact that we have this as a precedent is already major damage that's what i'm telling you anyways i have an instagram post here do you want me to show that oh yeah this was a post from andrew seidel that i was fantastic um for those who don't know andrew seidel is a constitutional lawyer that works with the freedom from religion foundation and um very smart guy so wait, can you All start right. it over from the beginning though? Yeah, I, there's no there's no way for Instagram to let you do that. You have to just wait. Just gonna now, no, wait. It just can you refresh the page and then it'll restart. Yeah, no, I'm gonna do Same this Carson and then hit and then hit refresh. Look like that. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh nope. Supreme Court is gaslighting America. It just decided a case out of Maine, Carson versus Macon, and it turned religious freedom on its head. It said that religious freedom requires taxpayers to fund religious indoctrination and education. Religious freedom has long meant that the government cannot tax you, take your money and give it to religious schools and churches, no government enforced tithing, that kind of thing. And that's the principle that it's turned on its head. And it did so with gaslighting, truly. The court claimed to, yeah. it claimed that it its decision sorry, sorry. was preventing discrimination against these religious schools, these Christian schools. But the Christian schools, the schools at issue in this case, are themselves discriminating against LGBTQ students, against non-Christian students. Uh, you go read the record, some really awful, horrible things that they were doing. So if discrimination was the issue, we wouldn't be trying to send money to these schools in the first place. It's really difficult to overstate how drastic a departure this is from how we have understood the First Amendment and religious freedom in America since the founding. This is a big deal, and you should all be worried. Gaslighting. The U.S. Supreme Court is gaslighting. So that was yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. No. Okay. So I just want to point out how uh, this man is a constitutional lawyer, and we had I didn't listen to it before I heard uh, before my commentary, and apparently our commentary was as good as a constitutional lawyer. So. <laughs> oh my that, God. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that I saved, you know, a lot of money um, because I'm, oh, I'm shut not, up. <laughs> not going to university and becoming educated like that, because apparently we're just so good that we had just we don't need any. We're as good as an educated lawyer on these topics. So just want to okay, congratulate. Well, I will never, school. you know, deign to compare myself to the knowledge of Andrew Seidel because he's a, a very admirable man. But oh my god anyway <laughs> i just want to point that right, so d d is making an important point saying andrew predicted all of this yes andrew seidel has been sounding the alarm on the issues with the supreme court for a long time and so i will boost the message that he's always saying because this also ties this was a huge decision this week this ties into the issues with roe v wade which we will get into in greater depth at a later point the only way, the only way to fix these issues that uh, of these rulings coming down from this ultra conservative Supreme Court, the only way to fix this is to expand the expand the judiciary. It's the only way. So 
we need to get organized around politicians who will actually push to expand the judiciary because otherwise we're going to be stuck with this um and yeah so like in terms of you know these big supreme court decisions that have been happening this week like my dad asked me he's like oh are you going to go to any protests and i was like honestly no i don't think it's useful like it's good to have a good visual of the show of force well but it won't actually do anything what will do something is expanding the judiciary so go support organizations like Americans United for a separation of church and state, Freedom from Religion Foundation, uh, American Atheists. All three of these organizations are really at the forefront of utilizing the law to protect secularism in the United States. Um, and also, I'm going to do some work into looking into who is doing the work of organizing and promoting expanding the judiciary, um, because, you know, we can we actually need to like push politicians to do this instead of Biden being like, oh, you know, maybe think about it. Like, no, we need, we need to step things up in a major, major way. Um, enough leftist infighting over getting canceled over the slightest little yeah. thing. Wait, look, look no, no, that no, wait, 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 wait. Actually, that's a very good point. That's a very, very good point. Okay. We need to, find every single person every single leftist okay who said what you know hillary as because we we didn't have bernie which you know hillary is just as bad as trump it doesn't make any difference and bernie or, or all the bernie or bus people okay because this is on them this is Jimmy on Dore. The, this is on every single leftist that encourage people not to vote for Hillary because we need to show the Democrats that if you don't pick our candidates, then you're not going to have our support. Okay. The climate is suffering because of you. Trans people are suffering because of you. Gay people are suffering because of you. And now women are suffering because of you. And you call yourself a leftist, a leftist that has made a world a much worse place, especially on the things that leftists are supposed to be caring about. LGBT issues, environmental issues, and women issues. You screwed them all by being a Bernie or Buster, by, by not voting for Hillary. None of this would happen. We are going to, United Americans are going to pay for decades, decades to come because of your Supreme Court every single woman suffering because of this every single poor woman in america who's going to be suffering because of the judges that trump picked it's on you it's on you who didn't vote for hillary and the, it's not just americans because of the climate issues the world is now going to be suffering and it's on you because you didn't go and vote for hillary so good job this is what being a leftist gets you <sighs> I like what, yeah. And people Fun are saying, stuff. "What's so what's so great about Hillary?" Not Nothing. Much, not the point. Not, not much, except she wouldn't be picking these judges that is screwing over every single American woman. Yeah, then we're going to be not, stuck not with not for single, decades and decades and decades. One. Yeah. Well, good job. Some people actually voted for Hillary. Um, I did. All I didn't right. like it, but I did it. Yeah. <laughs> The, the fact that you didn't like it, but you did means that you understand what the, you know, you, you're not supposed to like every single candidate. You're supposed to understand what's at stake. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below, because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.